silver accomplishment. I finished my guardhouse box. But beware the shocking silver loss. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I am so excited about this accomplishment that I just passed not too long ago by filling my guardhouse box. Now, you see three slots that are open. The reason that those are open is not because I didn't have the silver half dollars to fill it, it's because I didn't have the tubes <laughs> to put in there. So, um, Christmas stocking. Yes, I was so excited to get these. <laughs> they make great stocking stuffers, don't they? Well, I got three tubes to fill. And that will finish off this guardhouse box. The, the um, uh, constitutional silver I got, I got from my local coin shop dealer, Tim Marshner of the Coin and Stamp Shop. He's a great guy, and uh, I did a video on that uh, not too long ago. Had a great deal back when silver was a lot lower than it is now, and um, I'm really excited about what I got. I mean, I cleared him out <laughs> of at least the, uh, uh, the Kennedys. I think he had a bunch of Benjis, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to fill this guardhouse box with half Kennedys, 90% Kennedys, and half Benjamin Franklin. Now, before I go any further, I need to shout out Talking Bullion, okay? He gave me this empty guardhouse box. Here's the, the lid. It's a lot easier to hold this, but he gave me this with a few tubes and it just inspired me to fill it with constitutional silver. If you don't know TB, I'm telling you, he is the the master of constitutional silver, okay? <laughs> and if you are interested in a empty guardhouse box like this one to, to fill, the, the link is down in my description. In fact, if you haven't checked out the description of my videos, there is a whole host of links in there, a lot of helpful information. I highly encourage you to check it out, but there is a link down there for a half dollar guardhouse box. I just love this box, in fact, <laughs> no, nah, I'll lift it up later. It is so heavy. <laughs> so anyways, as you probably know, stacking the Yankee way is the name of my stacking strategy. And one leg of the stacking stool, if you will, is constitutional silver. I love dimes, quarters, half dollars. I tend to stay away from the higher premium silver dollars, or at least from a, a stacking perspective. Although I love a good Morgan or Peace Dollar, don't get me wrong. But when it comes to really stacking this stuff, I try to you know focus on those three things. Dimes, quarters, and half dollars. 90%. That's the minimum I like to go. And I love constitutional silver. I love it so much, I don't clean it. I don't care how dirty it is, okay? <laughs> I don't clean these. I think they've earned their dirt and grime and tarnish and whatever else is on here. But... I do stack them primarily for the potential to barter with them in the future after an SHTF scenario. We'll see. In fact, I think they make the best uh, fractional silver to own. Okay, and I love both Benjamin Franklin's, which are here, and Kennedy uh, half dollars, which are here. I happen to respect the Founding Father just a little bit more than JFK, but... He, that doesn't influence my stacking choice. I, I really do like both. And you know what has influenced my choice between going with Benji's, which again are just really cool. I love this uh, design. Uh, they had to put the, uh, the eagle really small on the right hand side because that's a requirement of the US Mint to always have an eagle on our coinage. But anyways, I, I, I do like the Benjis and I do like the Kennedys. Now, there are, are several, uh, you know, things that influence me when it comes to which one, right? One is recognizability. When you see a Benji, you know it's silver. When you see a Kennedy, it's probably not silver. I mean, you got to look for that 1964 date to make sure it's 90%. 
It can be 40%. You know, you, you got to be careful and look at the dates. So, yeah, that factors into it. But prices, too. Most of the time, Kennedy, 90% Kennedy's, 90% Benji's, around the same price. It can vary, all right, depending on, you know, rarity and so forth. Again, I, I don't care about key dates or anything like that. I'm just stacking it primarily for weight, okay? And, and that gets to the third point, wear and tear, okay? That may not seem important to you, but guys, when I started stacking this, I assumed that going back, you know, further in time to the Benjis would mean they're more wear, right? And more wear means less silver. And that's important to me. The difference in the amount of silver between a Benji and a Kennedy is striking, actually. But here's the, here's the thing that I found amazing and somewhat deceiving. While a Benji and a Kennedy half dollar weigh the same, they're minted to weigh identically. It's supposed to be 12.5 grams, okay, each of these. And a lot of times that's the case, 12.5. Uh, well, if there's not a lot of wear, right? So if I take a look at this, let's see, it's on grams, and this is a 1964 teared. All right, 12.46, okay? And it is a nice-looking Kennedy, okay? That that doesn't have much wear at all. You can see his hair. It's really good in the back. You can see the, the wings. Uh, they have their the, all the feathers on there. It's, a, it's really a nice specimen for a Kennedy half dollar. Now, if you compare that to, say, this... Oh, that's been all worn up, right? You can see this 1962 Benji is, oh my goodness, you can, yeah, it is definitely worn. But here's the kicker, guys. This was 12.45. This measures 12.57. That's actually more grams than they meant it for. So what explains the difference? Why? Do you see, you know, wear like this, but it weighs a little bit more. Guys, I think it comes back to how I said they earn their dirt, grime, and tarnish. I think the dirt, the grime, and the tarnish can build up on this in little pits and grooves and actually show that it's uh, way more. So weight may not be the best way to show this potential wear and tear, the loss of silver and, and guys, I, I care a lot about that, right? So instead of weight, what about, well, let me first put them, put the last uh, three tubes in really quick here. There's 20 in a tube. So there's one Kennedy. Oh, I'll wow. keep the cover off. <laughs> one, and yes, I do put the shiny ones on the top because you know, I don't know. I just think those are cool looking. So. <laughs> All right, so there's two. <laughs> and then the Benji. All right, and again, 20 of these. Nice and shiny. All right. So while weight can be somewhat deceiving, the height of the silver half dollars in these tubes is strikingly different. And I'm going to pick this thing up really carefully. Man, that's heavy. And I'm going to hold this up to the camera. And you can see the first two rows of those Benjis are a lot lower in the tube. This one especially. Look at that one. And over here too. Look at that. And then look back here at the Kennedys. Look at the height in the tube. I'm going to get really close here. See the difference. Right across the board. I don't think there is a single tube of Kennedy's that isn't higher than every one of the Benjis. That is quite demonstrative. In fact, I want to know your opinion on this. And, and yeah, actually, I, I do have a bunch of leftover half dollars here. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do another guardhouse box, but it is nice to throw this in with the rest of the silver. And, and, and by the way, I do love walkers. I mean, come on. Look at that. It's iconic, right? That's what uh, inspired our American Silver Eagle. So, yes, I do love walkers, but talk about wear and tear. I don't want to stack too much of these. 
So anyways, I'm going to throw this in with a big pile of Constitution I do not have in any boxes yet. And um, yeah, I want to hear your opinion on this. What are you stacking when it comes to half dollars? Do you stack half dollars? Do you have a guardhouse box you're working on? If so, please leave a comment down there. Like, subscribe if you haven't. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay. Hee <laughs>